I'm going to start at the CSR's mandate, um, uh, which is around doing directed and multidisciplinary research. So we don't do blue sky research that belongs at the universities. Um, directed means we're problem focused. So we um, try always to understand what the challenge is in the manufacturing industry in our case. Um, and then do work around uh, those problems. Um, we do technological innovation. Innovation for us means that we uh, get involved in the implementation in industry. So it's not uh, just academic work. And then we uh, remind ourselves constantly that we have to act in the national interest. Um, and uh, as you can see in the mandate, we have quite uh, freedom on uh, what fields we work in, who we partner with, uh, and so on. Um, and it's even in the mandate to contribute to the improvement of the quality of life uh, of the people of the Republic. Um, so this mandate has been around for a long time, and it is the driver um, uh, in our uh, daily activities and strategies that we develop and so on. So I think the, the best way to describe what we do in CSR is to look at our strategic objectives, which are uh, published in our compact with the DSI every year. Uh, so it's a public document. So firstly, we, do, we conduct research and development of transformative technologies and accelerate the diffusion. And, and in our times, it's specifically the 4 uh, range of technologies, um, but it's beyond that. Um, then we uh, improve the competitiveness of high impact industries to support South Africa's reindustrialization by collaborating, developing, localizing, and implementing technology in industry. Um, and then the third one is to drive socioeconomic transformation through RDNI that supports the development of a capable state. So there we work with uh, different government departments and and we do a range of things with them, including um, studies uh, to uh, inform policy um, and uh, development programs and so on. Um, and the last two is more internally focused. Uh, so the one is to build and transform human capital and infrastructure. That human capital is very important. We um, or in a very dynamic talent market, um, with lots of competition for talent from overseas. Um, so it's important to um, build that human capital constantly. And some of the areas that we do r and in is actually quite expensive in terms of infrastructure, and, um, and that could sometimes be a big constraint. And then just financial sustainability and good governance. Um, so that's the big picture in CSR. Um, we have in CSR nine different uh, clusters or units, um, and we are the in the middle three. Um, our division um, we look at manufacturing, and we've been given four specific industries uh, to focus on, um, being automotive, uh, medical devices. Uh, metals, um, aerospace, and then we also look at uh, industrial equipment, um, machinery, that uh, kind of thing. Um, Artmet will say a few words about mining, I hope, and then defense and security. But if you look at the, the other clusters, uh, for example, the top model chemicals, that's also manufacturing industry, um, health has got to do with in manufacturing um, and so on. So um, I'm just going to focus on what we do in the manufacturing cluster. Just keep in mind that uh, there's a broader picture. Um, so if we look at what it, what our contribution is, um, we could summarize it like this. We do materials engineering. Um, so we develop new alloys and so on with special properties um, that's required in industry, work with a number of companies uh, doing that. We um, 
develop manufacturing process technologies, um, and those would be around shaping materials, fabrication, surface treatments, joining, and so on. Um, and uh, we do refurbishment technologies and systems. Um, and I'll show you an example of that in a moment that actually um, combines a number of uh, quite advanced technologies into one solution. Um, manufacturing equipment development. Um, there, our uh, main activity at the moment in terms of uh, budget and number of uh, specialists involved is in the metal additive manufacturing or metal 3D printing. Um, we do a lot of custom-made one-off machines for companies uh, that require um, special um, either manufacturing processes, um, assembly processes or human uh, materials handling and so on. And then we work in the space of manufacturing systems and industrial engineering. And um, when you look at that, it's another way of putting it is we optimize factories or um, um, what do you call it? Lines, manufacturing lines, production lines. Um, and we do that with uh, factory, factory simulation tools. Um, and we find and implement fire based competitiveness improvement opportunities with individual companies and um, with uh, the air target industries and industry bodies. Um, so, um, further areas of R&D, and i is um, in the product domain, so the factories, so only a factory if it can produce something, obviously. Um, so we work with um, companies to improve their products for export, for example, for uh, meeting um, standards in the in the markets that they are targeting internationally, um, and we develop uh, new products. Um, with companies or um, well, we sometimes we do it by ourselves and uh, we spin out companies around uh, products and so on. We do uh, product localization support um, and that could be to take a, a product and um, to develop the manufacturing processes for that product specifically for the processes available in the companies that's uh, interested in manufacturing uh, that product, uh, we could redesign um, the product to make it easier to manufacture and so on. This is typically in uh, local content um, programs uh, and, and so forth. Um, we also bring in um, complete manufacturing uh, processes at the moment we're working on a um, process that's called metal injection molding. Um, it's been around for quite a while, but currently there's not any factory that we're aware of in South Africa that's uh, actually implementing um, that manufacturing process. Um, it's it's quite an involved uh, process, and, and it's a bit high risk um, for companies to tackle. We, then we do materials testing services and, and also forensic investigations, and also product testing, etc. So here's uh, just an example of uh, work that we're doing at the moment um, with ESCOM Rotec, which is the engineering arm of ESCOM. Um, as you know, we do maintenance on these big um, gas turbines and the, uh, the photo that you're looking at, uh, if you look at um, the second and further on the ring of blades, you'll see it's got a ring there um, that keeps the blades in position. Um, so one of the things that uh, is done when um, the rotor is taken out for maintenance is those rings are inspected and from time to time uh, there's cracks in them, and in the past, what would happen is they would grind off the ends of all those blades um, to get the whole ring out, 
they would scrap all those blades, scrap the ring, um, and replace all of that with uh, new blades and a new ring, and it takes forever. Um, now, with our technology, the machine that you see there in the background is a robotic arm um, with a tool which basically deposits uh, metal powder on the blade tips, um, and then there's a laser feed that goes through that tool, and uh, you have a, a metal uh, cladding um, functionality then. So you can grind off those tips from the blades um, and then rebuild them um, later on. So you don't have to replace the blade. Uh, furthermore, we don't take the whole ring off, we just take the damaged part off and then um, we can weld a, um, a new one into that um, area. Um, so that machine is developed by CSR with partners, um, mostly as a systems integrator. So we bought a commercial laser, a com commercial robot, uh, and so on. Um, and we worked with the ESCOM R&D department uh, for many years to um, develop that manufacturing process there to deposit the uh, metal powders and, and melt it and um, they have the metallurgy sorted out so that on a metallurgical level you can't see a difference between the part that was cladded on and the original part. Um, they have all of that certified so we have a few welding engineers there um, in, in, in the photo that's one of few uh, in the country. Um, that's been working with ESCOM to um, make absolutely sure that this thing is going to work and keep on working um, and it's actually better than um, what it was uh, even before um, we started doing the maintenance. There's some additional uh, functionality um, that we've um, worked on, for example, the, the front, the leading edge of each of those turbine blades are high wear items and they wear off and um, the whole thing becomes less efficient. Um, so cladding that leading edge is a program that we're working off with uh, ESCOM R&D um, to also get going and then there's a technology for um, where the blades are mounted to the rotor itself. Um, it's a high stress area and uh, cracks typically form there. So we're working with them to uh, sort of pre-stress um, that area uh, using a laser technique. Um, so this demonstration of us um, developing manufacturing processes, multiple ones getting them certified, um, and implemented um, and um, helping to speed up the uh, refurbishment and um, maintenance processes in ESCOM to reduce um, load shedding, obviously. Um, so just that rotor that you're looking at, that's uh, between half and one stage of uh, load shedding. So uh, obviously guys here are quite stressed and um, yeah, what can I say? So uh, other areas for RDNI um, is similar to other organizations like ourselves in the rest of the world, NIST, for example, uh, in the USA, and uh, Fraunhofer in Germany. Um, we get involved where um, there's infrastructure required for R&D or even for uh, testing and so on that's beyond the means of individual companies, um, financial means, or where um, there's, a, there's limited reason for a company to undertake uh, R&D, for example, when um, they can't protect it in any way. It's, if it's going to leak out easily, then... Uh, then they, they are reluctant, and that's where we uh, sometimes step in. Um, I talked about the metal injection molding, which is 
which has been around for a long time, actually, in the rest of the world. It's a, a technology with uh, growing implementation, the whole powder metallurgy uh, um, business in the world grows uh, much faster than other sectors in manufacturing. So to bring that technology in, built the first um, demonstration factory uh, in South Africa, and then hopefully get uh, local companies to invest um, and first try out our, on our facility, um, understand the risks, understand the economics, um, and then invest and uh, get support from us to make it work in in their own uh, factories. Um, that's the kind of thing that we're involved in. And then uh, industry standards, uh, especially in new areas, uh, you get a tend to get a bunch of companies uh, working in the same space, um, but um, using their own approaches and so on. And so if the downstream industries then have this problem of um, not really knowing what they're getting from the different companies. So um, putting down a national kind of standard of doing the, the tech work uh, for the development of that uh, standard um, is another area of activity. Then we do uh, industry level work, work with the industry bodies um, to help um, develop uh, roadmaps and so on for um, the, the development of specific industries. We were involved, for example, a few years ago with a number of partners in the development of a roadmap for the aluminium industry. DSI has run a number of uh, projects for developing roadmaps for different industry, uh, including advanced manufacturing technologies and so on. Um, and yeah, so we also, as I said earlier, do evidence-based policy development support, we do all kinds of studies um, for that, and we um, contribute to the evaluation and design of um, development support measures. I'll give an example of that a little bit later. So I think one thing to keep in mind is that uh, the manufacturing industry is extremely diverse. Um, and so we find ourselves um, having to contribute on all the levels, you could say, from the really high-tech um, kind of advice and, and, and involvement right through to um, relatively basic um, manufacturing system support, quality management systems, uh, and so on. So just a, as an example of that, in automotive in South Africa and internationally, we have a multi-tiered industry largely controlled by the OEMs um, with enormous resources in terms of uh, R&D and um, with significant influence over uh, all the tiers in that uh, industry. Um, and in South Africa, um, they uh, control basically what the tier one and tier two uh, companies do. Um, uh, not much needed from us there. Um, then in the upstream industries, you have the smelters and so on, like uh, cellular metal, Uleman. You have mining companies, and as we saw in the previous uh, presentation, we talk billions of rands of investments, huge infrastructure, large companies, um, often with their own uh, advanced in-house R&D capabilities and so on. Um, then the foundry industry is a little bit downstream from there. Um, that's an industry that feeds many further uh, industries. Um, and it's a very interesting industry in terms of the mix of companies from uh, high tech, uh, very advanced companies, medium sized mostly, uh, uh, feeding in into automotive. Uh, right through to family-owned small businesses with um, you know, maybe 
30, 40 employees um, that cannot afford r and services, cannot pay normal professional rights. Um, we have the multi-tiered industry. So in one industry, we end up having to support a broad range of needs um, and then industry bodies, they need something different for us again. So um, this is just a explanation of um, the diversity of of needs and services that we therefore uh, need to have in place to uh, support this manufacturing industries. So when we talk about um, small manufacturing businesses, creation and support, and there, you know, small businesses, as I said, um, can't really afford uh, contract or these services. So um, they we mostly um, providing support as part of um, national programs. One of them is the DTIC's Aerospace Industry Support Initiative, IEC. We've been involved in managing that for the department for many years. Um, and then we are involved in uh, independent objective manufacturing capability assessment for these small businesses. We um, identify capability gaps with them, um, given what the business objectives are. Um, and then uh, we do things like uh, products and manufacturing capability roadmaps for them. Uh, so that they have a picture of what a good development path would be for them. And then we um, contract on their behalf um, companies that can provide those services and that uh, those performance improvement services are then funded by the DTIC. Um, so that is an example from the aerospace industry, which is one of these industries that we focus on um, in our cluster. Another one is the medical devices industry. Um, and there um, we, we provide a range of service to small uh, companies that I'll come to in a moment. Um, then we do product development and spin out. So one example of that is a, a technology for monitoring power lines, uh, the, the big uh, insulators um, that get dirty or cracks and so on and to bring the line down. So um, it's a product that's manufactured by spin out and sold uh, internationally, used by ESCOM as well. Um, so product development and spin out is one thing that we do. We help the companies, small existing companies, get access to supply chains. So supplier development, for example, in the OEM, in the automotive uh, supply chain, um, upgrading manufacturing capabilities of small companies to the requirements of the um, whatever tier they are feeding into in the uh, automotive industry, for example. Um, we provide access to infrastructure and equipment for testing concepts, technologies, processes. And yeah, also these days, um, the sort of digital engineering um, infrastructure. So we have a full suite of engineering uh, design tools, modeling and simulation tools in a number of engineering disciplines. And um, we... Uh, again, funded by the DTRC, uh, provide access to that um, for small companies. Um, and then uh, we provide general advice and so on, um, and often free of charge, ad hoc, <laughs> um, just to help out, um, and especially around product development and product certification, especially for export. So um, just in terms of the medical device um, in this manufacturing industry support that um, we provide uh, is probably too small for you to see, but um, there's a list of the uh, kinds of things that we do. There's awareness training, there's 
device regulatory issues, medical devices, you can imagine there's uh, very stringent regulations and standards needs to be complied with. Um, we help with product and manufacturing process development and the, the networking. So quality management systems, configuration management system, the device class classification, um, the certification um, of the manufacturing system and the product in the end, uh, the regulator support interfacing with the regulator and, and help um, small companies understand exactly what the implications of the regulations are and how to comply with them. Product testing, um, the uh, product development according to the ISO standard uh, 13485, which is a medical devices related standard. Um, config of the data pack. Um, it's a, there's a lot of um, data management, and you could say secure data management that needs to be done for medical devices throughout the life of the medical device, um, and so on. So a host of services to small companies, and this is a program that we're doing with the TIA, um, and so far we've supported more than 80 um, small medical device entrepreneurs um, to, to get going. Um, people have great ideas and completely underestimate what it takes to get a medical device through the through the certification and all the regulations that you have to comply with and what systems you need to have in place to to operate in that industry. Um, sustainable development contributions. Um, the, uh, we work in the areas of metal recycling technologies. Uh, we, from time to time, we work uh, with towards finding alternative technologies, cleaner uh, technologies, um, product technology and manufacturing process technologies for reducing environmental impact and um, advice on implementing replacement technologies. This is, this is an area that I think we need to grow. And um, I think we're really in the early days of that waste stream beneficiation technologies. Um, but for us, uh, sustainable economic development uh, obviously can only happen if we have competitive companies that are producing competitive products um, for export markets. And these days, this means you have to be competitive in, in all domains, including um, sustainability, uh, green technologies, um, and so on, because of the requirements of the export markets um, that are more and more leaning in that direction. Then skills pipeline contribution quickly, um, largely for meeting our own needs. Um, how do we grow or the expert in key fields? So we have the usual things that I think most organizations of our science have in our training and development programs. And um, as I mentioned earlier, it's one of our big challenges, um, especially in engineering and the foyer uh, space, the constant loss of expertise to overseas organizations. And yeah, the UAE, UAE is a special problem for us. Um, so we, this is a big, big challenge. Um, broader contribution. So we're not an educational institution, but obviously we have an interest and a, um, yeah, an interest there. Um, so we work with uh, different organizations in that space um, that are delivering um, programs to students and so on. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is uh, we're working with partners to create learning factories. Um, and they, we, we're involved with the partners to do curriculum development, um, especially focusing on skills, new skills um, that's acquired in the industries that we're targeting. Um, we also look at um, new delivery methods. Um, and for example, to provide remote access to manufacturing dem demonstration facilities for students to experiment with. So, um, a student could, for example, um, not have direct access to some kind of a robot um, with a few tools and so on attached to it, maybe a few sensors, 
and, and we can provide um, access to the tools to program that robot and then the student could download uh, that code into the robot system and uh, run it and, and uh, observe via video link what the robot does. Um, so that's an example, maybe not the best example, but um, of delivery methods for um, for developing skills. Um, yeah, and then of course we make staff available uh, to work with different institutions on um, different roles like lecturing, ex being external examiners, especially postgraduate academic su supervisors um, and postgraduate projects, project supervisors, and so on. So just a few take-home points before I admit um, so a few words. Um, so we provide a range of RDR services that cover most aspects of manufacturing from materials right through to production systems. Uh, we provide national infrastructure for industrial development, including testing and certification support uh, and technology demonstration support to, to reduce risk for the industry. Um, we provide services for small companies, mostly through programs funded by the DTIC and the DSI. Um, we think the NSI lacks mechanisms to foster industry cooperation towards competing internationally as a, as a team in South Africa. Um, we end up competing nationally rather than competing as a team um, or as a nation for global market share. Um, and that's, I think, something that needs to be looked at on a policy level. Um, and then we need better mechanisms for um, achieving a sharper focus uh, on industry needs. So we are absolutely sure that the limited r and funding that we have is spent um, on the things that will really make a difference um, in, in the country in terms of competitiveness and especially sustainability of competitiveness. Um, and then uh, I think you already mentioned by other speakers is this increase in public funding means that we have to operate as business uh, and that means taking less risk um, and that leads to all kinds of challenges um, brings in a short term focus erosion of capabilities um, and even if you work on simpler low-risk projects, you lose your experts um, because they want to work on challenging projects and advance their careers and want to work on routine uh, projects. Okay, so in in the mine, mining space, we uh, do uh, testing of the ropes. Um, we, we've been doing this um, for decades and it's driven by uh, regulations. So uh, Every one of the mines uh, has to provide a, um, a rope to to test. Um, also, do some work at the copper boss facility for um, especially coal mines. The research around uh, preventing um, explosions in in, in coal mines. Um, and we do competency based training using fire art technologies to uh, support zero harm. Um, then if you look broadly at um, the areas that we're involved in, um, ranges from extraction, mining processes, so um, mine planning, um, etc. Uh, we look at the geophysics, um, so during uh, operations of the mines to figure out exact, exactly where the ore body is um, so that you um, mine optimally. Um, we do rock engineering. Um, and this has to do also with making sure that um, any rock falls and so on are uh, prevented and uh, avoided and that um, the right uh, supports are put in um, and um, the tunnels and so on are secured. Um, and then we do uh, digital and automation solutions. So we also do 5 related work uh, in the mines. 
um, digital modeling, digital twins, uh, and so on. The, the digital transformation is also big in the mining space, like it is in manufacturing. And then uh, we work in the environmental sustainability uh, space. Um, yeah, it would have been better for, for my colleague to talk about this. Um, what can I say? Do a lot of testing on uh, equipment, uh, especially supports, as you can see there uh, in the middle, um, wooden supports and different types of supports, uh, also composite material based supports to keep the roof up. Um, we do training on self rescuers, so if there is a, a rock fall and uh, miners get trapped, um, there's a device that they use that provides them with. Uh, uh, oxygen and so on. So we um, we are involved in um, the whole testing and maintaining of that device and the skills of people. It's quite a challenge um, to make sure that people uh, respond appropriately in a dangerous situation. You know, people sort of can go into freeze mode, and you need to make sure that your training prevents that. Um, and then on the modernization side, a whole bunch of things uh, that uh, we're doing. Um, also, the Learning Factory has an uh, application in that space. Um, and then we're working with the um, large um, ground moving equipment, safety around that. And we've built a digital twin or a digital model of the whole operation of uh, using these uh, vehicles, trackers, mobile machines in the industry that we're um, uh, working with a uh, number of mines to get uh, implemented. Um, um, I think I've covered that. So how do we scale this? Um, so in CSR, we develop products, prototypes, technologies, um, and so on. We do com commercialization. We provide professional service, professional services similar to what we do in manufacturing, uh, technical advice, technology demonstration, do programs, and so on. Um, and we work with a bunch of mining houses as it is. You can see the list there. Um, and they, those mining houses typically contact us directly for uh, on these services, um, and we, when we talk about products, we have to work through the uh, mining equipment manufacturing industry to get uh, technologies implemented in mining. So that is what I'm able to say about mining. Thank you. <laughs>